Hi, my name is Rosario Osuna. I am currently uh, working on my internship um, here at the library for Gurria High School. I'm going through some Houston State University. And uh, one of the assignments for my current class is to interview um, a library leader. So I chose Ms. Armandina Villarreal. She's uh, my current on-site supervisor. And I have a couple of questions that I would like to ask to her. And thank you for doing this, Ms. Villarreal. Sure, sure. So, all right, if you just want a brief introduction to yourself, I know I gave out your name, but <laughs> okay. help us out a little bit. Okay. What um, is your role here at Korea High School? All right. I am the librarian here at the high school. I graduated from Sam Houston University in the year 2000. And I have been at the library since the year 2000, you know. So uh, I've been in, in the library system for 16 years. And um, no, you know what? I didn't graduate in 2000. 2000 was the last master's I obtained, which was in agriculture. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I graduated even before that. I guess it was 1998, 99, I don't recall. Wow. It's been a while, but I really enjoy my role as a librarian here. And uh, I don't have a clerk. I, I'm the Lone Ranger. And um, I've been, I opened this school six years ago. We're going to start in August, our seventh year. But I, I opened this library and the previous library that I was in, it was an elementary library. And I was there also for 10 years. And the, I also opened that library. It was a brand new spanking new nice. library. Since you mentioned you do not have a clerk, uh -huh. how does that help you or affect the development of the library and you it, it, having to have all the duties? It's, it's Is difficult. that normal in the library? It's no, it isn't. Uh, every, in, in our district, every librarian has a clerk. It just so happened that our clerk, we started off with a clerk, but she resigned right away and she moved because of family. Her, she was moving with her husband and they just never replaced her. And in the previous years, um, I've had a clerk, but they use her they use her to do other duties, other duties, like at the front desk and everything. So I'm always usually alone. So I had to learn to adapt. Mm -hmm. And what you do, well, what I what I do is you, in order to survive and be effective, you come earlier to work. Right. You know, instead of entering at 8.30, you enter at 7 a.m., 6.30 to try. It just depends how much work you have. And, and I'm, I'm assuming you also work extra time after school then? Yes, yeah, sometimes. That puts more the, the first few years, I would stay here till two or three in the morning. Wow. That's uncalled for, but I, I felt that I had to do it. Because it was a brand new library, we had everything had to be shelved. And, and you have to have a very supportive family to help you out. My family would be here on the weekends with me. Helping you out. Helping me out, yes. Okay. Now, um, what would be some uh, best practices that you would uh, like to share with me as a future librarian? <laughs> what would be the best practices as a librarian to help out the community, your patrons here? I mean, besides everything you've already done to get it going. I what would be the relationships that would best make the library be more effective? More effective. I, I think the key thing here to consider is you have to know your community their needs uh, I'm an outsider I drive um, 30 minutes or 40 minutes to get here mm -hmm. so from this small community I was considered the outsider and uh, I had to learn you, you learn in I think here the key word is common sense. Mm -hmm. I saw a t-shirt yesterday at Walmart that said, and I, I'm going to buy it now that you're interviewing me. It says, I wish common sense was more common. <laughs> and I loved it because uh, you have to use common sense. First of all, you have to have a good rapport with your administration. Mm -hmm. You know, administration has to back you up. If they really do. And if they don't, you have to learn I had a professor at Sam Houston that said, you cannot, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Right. 
but, she added, you can sure feed him a lot of salt so that he'll get thirsty and want to drink the water. So sometimes your administration might not back up your ideas, like you want to do all these things, especially when you're a first year librarian, you want to try so many different things. And some administrators will not allow you to do that because, oh no, you're giving my teachers extra duties. I want them to focus on testing and scores and all this. And you have to show them that the library is an important factor in bringing up scores. Right. You know, you have to really be an advocate, a voice for your library. And uh, but so get to know your administration, have a good rapport. Uh, have a good rapport with your teachers, key, key, key teachers. How about the collaboration with the teachers? How you, does that work? It, it's best to plan with them, like get a schedule of their planning period and then try to make a visit. Like I, I made a sign that says library, uh, librarians out for a bit, address the front office and I, you know, you get to go and, and stay with them, you know, for a little bit and you listen to what they're planning, their lesson plans. And you, and you offer your services. You know I can help here if you all would like to come to the library. You, you make the library accessible. And since we don't have a, a clerk and we have two lunches, you have to, you don't have to, but you, you eat in the library. Mm -hmm. You know, you take a bite here and a bite there. Because if I take my lunch, that means I have to close down the library for one lunch. Now this year was really nice because uh, administration sent the subs that were here subbing if they had if they could come and stay one period that would you know one of the lunches then i could eat you know during that lunch okay. so that was nice of them that was very nice of them mm -hmm. but sometimes you don't have those opportunities and you just have to be willing to make walk the extra mile mm -hmm. you know that time what about the environment the library like for students like what are some ideas, what good practices to make you want, want to come in? Hold on. Sorry, we're being interrupted. Can I borrow one of your shares sure, for a minute? Go right, right ahead. Go right so, ahead. Thank you. That's fine. That's what happens. It's that's what happens. And now we <laughs> deal with different things. Here. Right, right. Uh, to make it a to warm environment. Yes. Okay, you have to make the library a safe haven for the students, you know, where they feel safe and comfortable. And let me give you an example. I do not have to be here till 8.30, but that means that I do not offer library services to the students before class. So if I get here at 6.30 or at 7 o'clock, well, I offer the students the library services that, you know, in the morning. For those that are here very early. Very early. Because we have students in this area, and I'm sure across the country, that do not have internet at home. Mm -hmm. So if they have an assignment they have to work on, they can't do that unless they have access to the internet. Mm -hmm. So I come early and one of my assistant principals uh, addressed me, why do you come so early? You don't have to come so early. So I do need to come early because my students, some of my students, well, how many students do you have? So I had to start keeping a log so that they could see that I do have students in the morning coming in. And then after school, at first, I don't have to stay after school, but once to tutorials start, and I know that kids are gonna be staying after school, then it's a good idea to stay, start staying after okay. school. And they'll know, oh, Ms. Ariel is there, you know, because I leave everything on, and that way the tutoring, the students that are being tutored can also have library services. So we have to provide at least an hour before class some services, at least an hour after, after school, school and then during lunch. And if you have two lunches, you, you have to make it available for them. You know, it, so that they can, um, so they won't worry, so they can sleep comfortably. So they'll, they won't go to sleep, oh, I wonder if the library is gonna be there tomorrow because I have an assignment due and I, haven't, I don't have a printer and I don't have ink. You know, I don't want our students to, come, yes. to go through that. So you have to make it inviting and accessible. And you have to use a lot of common sense. And just have a good rapport. And that also includes using the computers, technology, anything yes. that's available. For anything them. that's you available. You make everything available for them. And some of our kids, because of our geographical location, some of our kids 